days. Hey guys, so I um, I don't know which button I've been pushing, but now the live stream started. Let me know if anyone is online because I want to make sure that it actually works. In the meanwhile, I took a picture of um, yeah what, what we were going to talk about today. Um... I don't see any people. I think this might not uh, this might not work. Ah, hi Lotte. Is it working? Can you hear me? Is the sound working? Everything. Do do do. Oh, what am I doing? What am I doing? Ah, this is it. Hey Yurian, Yurian, uh, can you hear me? Can you hear the sound? This is so slow, I have no idea. Well, I guess uh, I guess it works. At least uh, at least you guys are there. So, um, it's been a while since I made these live streams and I promised to make a video about a few things. So I, I actually took a picture just to be sure that I, answer, uh, that I answer the questions that I got. But the first thing I wanna start with Hmm. It's all this fear spreading about this virus thing. And uh, we did a video already about the virus and about the uh, deeper meaning of it and etc. But what is happening right now is so much fear is spreading around the world and so many rules and restrictions. Um, so I just, I just want to take like, uh, I want to take like an energetic point of view, right? What is a virus? A virus is uh, energy form. There travels. It, it travels and it, it formates uh, and everything about what it can link into its environment. It comes in contact with. It can either go up or go down in strength, right? So if you have a person who is super weak, then the immune system is down and the virus has like more space to grow. So in a, another way, like my friend Tesla would say, if you have a guy or a girl or whatever, a cat, whose immune system is low, then it's vibrating with a lower frequency. That means that there's room for the virus to be a vibrationally matched to that frequency, which will allow it to grow. Because everything is energy and vibrations. So if you then... <laughs> If then you look at your whole being as energy and you look at what you are feeding upon and you measure the energy and vibration. So you measure, for example, the energy of fear is vibrating uh, somewhere a little bit below the middle. You measure the vibration of peace. It's, it's vibrating just around 70% like up there. Vibrating the, the, the vibrations of love. You around the 90%, right? So um, imagine that your body feels safe. It feels loved. And you feel free. Then what the virus can do is the virus can enter your body system. Because this is what a virus do. It's spread. It's traveling from person to person. It's, it's like it's thing. You know, it's its function. But... The viral virus will not be a energetically match to anything within your body system, which means that it can formitate, it cannot grow, it cannot reach a level where it can develop within you, and therefore it travels on, it, 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 it runs through your system. So the very, very best thing humanity can do <laughs> is to nurse our bodies, it's to realign with a feeling of love and compassion and wholeness. It's not to separate, but to stick together. It's not to fear intimacy, but to embrace it. So what our governments do, and I fully understand this from a human perception, so don't think that I'm like trying to change the world, but, well, I am, but not like that, um, is that, we get a lot of fear. 
And when we are in the state of fear, our vibration is low, but that also makes us kind of high because we, we tend to fly out of our body, we tend to fly out of our self-trust, our self-belief. And then within the fear, there comes the restrictions. Not more than a thousand people, which is pretty smart. I, I would say it's smart and it's good because there is people with a low immune system that's not ready to fight this thing and I understand but the thing about do not hug, do not touch each other, do, do, do. You know, like all this fear becomes the epitome. All this fear creates separation. And when we are in the state of separation, what happens is people get depressed. People start having to look inside of themselves, but in a state where they're alone and they're not really um, encouraged by faith but encouraged by fear. So therefore the vibration do like a down spiral. That means that essentially we would be more vibrationally mats for the virus or whatever virus by isolating ourselves more. Look into that one because that one is really, um, that one is a good one. So I'm not saying that we shouldn't take our, uh, that thing where you protect yourself because of course, of course, we should be um, conscious about everything in the world. <laughs> but the thing about this virus is that... you Have you ever heard this thing? Easy money comes, easy money goes. So what comes easily, goes easily, right? It's the same with this kind of thing. So the whole structure of this virus is... Boom! But the virus uh, formatates over a period of time it has like a peak time and then it start like settling because one thing is the virus intelligence but your system have been working for centuries your system is older than this virus so this your system learn your immune system your own technology this thing you know whoop, whoop. it learns so fast how to navigate with these things so yes in the beginning it will be a shock like poof ah freak out but then we will learn, our immune system will learn how to adjust to these new vibrations as well. So what we really need to do is we really need to learn to trust our bodies, to trust each other um, and to trust ourselves. I do understand that in a world reality like this, it is not always easy and... There is, uh, in the media, the, the, what we play on a lot is fear. And what we do is react from fear of getting something or uh, try to not get something, you know. So the whole space of, of, of surrendering trust and feeling and really trusting the self is getting smaller um, in that. But when things get extreme one way there is the possibility for it to get extreme in another way so that means what if <laughs> if everything fails like okay i had this anti-resistant bacteria uh, thing once i think in 2012 or so they put me in like quarantine isolation ah! and i had to carry around this card for a year because uh, if i got ill i would die you know like we cannot put you on the hospital it was very weird um but that meant that for months they gave me all these gif different kind of uh, antibiotics, right? And antibiotics, it, it was like uh, penicillin, diseslin. There was four, four different kinds. And I just got more and more white in my face, like completely. I felt like, like an empty shell. But, but the, the bacteria didn't die. The anti-resistant thing didn't die of any of these medicals because what happened with me was that I lost more and more faith in my faith in my body I lost more and more faith in my own system my own life I thought if if one little one little dot can kill me what am I you know so but then you reach this point where they tell you well you've got this anti-resistant uh, bacteria thingy we can't do anything so your body has to heal it itself you know boom you're on the side path you're on this side path where, where you have like two choices choice number one is surrender okay then i'm just gonna die i'm gonna stay like this forever or two now i'm gonna heal myself <laughs> if nothing else works boom let's turn inside 
So what this life crisis situation does, it it gives us two opportunities. Are we going to surrender to not trusting ourselves and just go down with the spiral and believe in the fear and and we're going to do like a plate thing again like in the 1500s, 14, 14, 14 and a half? Or are we going to turn to the self-healing and self-trust part? Are we going to turn to the part where we stick together and where we believe and we know that easy comes, easy goes. So we let the intermediate epitome go like high peak while we nurture ourselves and we do vitamins and uh, breathe in good air and stuff like that and then then we overcome it because it stabilizes that stabilizes we stabilizes and we find a new center personally this is the approach i like personally this is the approach that i feel aligned with i uh as a person, I'm afraid of a lot of stuff, which is weird, you know? Like if I get a mole, I get afraid because it vibrates different than the rest of my body. So what I don't understand, I fear. It's so mess. Yeah. So I'm learning from this, learning from fear and, uh, and love. Anyhow, but this coronavirus thing, I never feared it. And it was me- weird to me because <laughs> this thing, everybody thinks you're dying of, right? But a mole on your body... Nobody cares that got a mall. So what is the freaking difference? So when I look into it, what it is, is that everything there's naturally, I have a certain understanding of. It's, it's, it's like in the flow, it's a part of the game. Everything there's man-made for me feels fake. And if I look into this corona thingy, it is man-made. Because for to making the, I know that some of the scientists will say, is, well, sometimes a virus just are able to jump from animal to human, which essentially is true. But in order of doing that, there has to be an a extra iron, a, a iron proton combined in the neutrons from the virus on the animal for that to transform into something the human can perceive. Which means that 99% of the cases that is man-made. Hmm? So it is been my belief that it is man-made. We, but whoever is the guy who have made it, we're never attending that humanity should die. So, so this kind of thing does like this. Woo, boom. And we just need to uh, sit it out, have faith and do a lot of vitamin C and hug our families. Yes. Go to nature. There's no corona in the nature. It is probably in the airports. Who knows? I am in the airports quite a lot. But <laughs> nature, plants, all these things. There's no reason to fear that. That is healing. That is oneness. That is nature. It's what we come from. Okay. So we got that angle cleared. Um, yeah, so this is this is like this, that is linked to the disease and the up and the down and, and sort of kind of how to navigate in that. Then we have, <laughs> then we have this whole world order of finance, right? So by China shutting down, the stock markets are falling and people are going crazy and buying all the toilet papers in the world uh, and buying rice and flour. I read somebody did, but. I don't even eat rice or flour, so I don't know. I think I'm not going to fall in the category who who going to live from rice and flour for three months. Anyways, what happens is when we create so much fear <laughs> or control, because what is being done also causes or shuts down and stuff. And, and it's good that we have like a safety net. So there's pros and cons with everything. But the fact is that when we create these kind of safety nets, um, a lot of things in the world are changing and as the world is built up by exchanging energy, money, power, then when we do these drastical things, then the world are changing that risk a lot. So there's a lot of markets that's influenced by this and there's a lot of control there are trying to control which direction this is going. So, of course, one of the reasons that the media and everything it, it's put so high on, on, the, on the scale is also that it, it is playing a role 
in a shift that is going on in the world. So for me, I like peace. I think, whoo, sorry. I like peace. <laughs> so I think, no, why do we have to do all this all the time? But for the world to change, we need massive um, changes once in a while. We need these wake up calls. And this is one of them. So from this moment, there is a change going on in the world and we can fear it or we can hate it or we can love it. But the truth is, it was written in stones. It was supposed to happen. It was supposed to create this crack uh, in the economic so that the way that we have been doing things have to change. What happens now is now we're in between. All the fear, everything up and down, it's hard to really realize what to do with what. But it also means that after we hit this high peak and the, the whole illness thing start like get like this maintaining thing, then we realize what's going on on the financial part and blah, blah, blah. This is where we need to be the one who start to choose differently. This is here where we need to rethink and recreate a new system there fits us better. Um, so this is actually the part where I'm thinking, okay, this is going to be interesting <laughs> because there's so many possible outcomes and there's so many ways that these nations can choose to react. Um, so as civilized people, the most important thing we can do is really just zoom out zoom out go inside and and just be with ourselves what do we see with our own eyes what what feels right in our own life where we're standing right now because every time we turn on the tv we will we will be fed it with whatever direction that we are wish to be lead you know um i'm not saying we should be blind, be blind at all of course we should uh, we should be informed of how the world perceives what is going on. But allow yourself to truly tap out. To tap out and tap inside of yourself. And live from there. Um, yes. I think there was the two things that I promised to cover in this very moment. Um... So if yeah, like literally, if I look at it energetically, it is it is really the one of these uh, <laughs> one of these things that just comes up, it peaks and it goes down. It, the, we shouldn't fear it as the end of the world or doomsday or something like that. It is horrible for the people it hits, uh, definitely. Um, but as a as a as a species. We will survive this. There's no doubt about it. And, um, and stick together. Be in the vibration of love. Be in the vibration of peace. And let's see what we can create from what is to come. Um, if you guys have any questions or any comments or anything you want to add to the perception of which I share... Please uh, write it in the comment below. I would, uh, I will read it and I will respond. I promise to make this other video uh, as well, but I think this really is going to be too long if I'm going to edit now. So from this Tuesday, rainy Tuesday, <laughs> this is all. I wish you a beautiful, beautiful day out there, and just peace in your heart. If we really, really, really zoom out, this whole thing is a game, right? We're playing a game. So let's just enter our roles and and get the best out of it. I had I always have this one thing in my head and I'm just going to share it and then we're going to stop, I promise. I did this skydiving thing, right? And I was the only one freaking completely out until the second we were in the air. I was like, can you not see, do you not realize that we are literally three kilometers above the ground. And we're just going to jump out of an airplane thinking, oh, maybe the parachute will work. Maybe it's not. It's so unnatural, right? So 
what you're gonna do is that the second you are in the air, the second that you you literally do like this, whoop. So <laughs> the second you're in the air, you have two choices: fully surrender because you can't change the outcome, or panic, but you still can't change the outcome. So no matter whatever we fear, if we are not able to change it from where we stand, why fear it? Why not just make it the best possible in the moment that we are here? Do you understand what I mean? So um, I'm not saying we cannot change the outcome because we can, but we are not changing anything by fearing it. We're changing it by creating more space for development and faith and trust okay guys that's all for today um i love you (laughs) and uh, i will talk with you soon